Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing part two of my June reading wrap-up. Just like I asked in the first part of the June reading wrap-up, do let me know how you feel about me splitting these up into smaller chunks. Without further ado, let's get into the books. If you remember from the first part of my June wrap-up, I read Radicalized by Cory Doctorow and ended up in a reading slump and decided to move into my Harry Potter reread for the year. So of course I'm continuing on with that with Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I was maybe like four or five when I had Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone read to me by my mother. And then the first Harry Potter book that I remember reading by myself, it was the Chamber of Secrets. It was the very last day of grade three. Like all of my classmates had moved to meet their grade four teacher and I was going to a different school in the fall. I didn't get to go with all of my friends um, and so I was just sitting alone in the classroom for like the last 20 minutes or 30 minutes of the day and I remember being really sad and reading Harry Potter by myself and obviously I've read it many times since every time a new book came out I reread all the books for it and then obviously I studied it for my master's thesis. Now as a young adult I find myself relating a lot more to some of the teachers. Specifically in this book we have Lockhart who is this like young imposter. The fact that he actually is an imposter I think is funny because I feel like most of the time as a young adult you are spending a lot of time bullshitting your competence while feeling like you're drowning. It's like the image of the swan, right? The swan glides across the lake and underneath the water the swan's feet are going like this to propel it forward. Like I feel like that's what young adulting is about. To see somebody like Lockhart who is bullshitting his way through a career as an author, um, a career as a wizard, a career as a teacher, right? To see him bullshitting that and actually failing at it. Um, it was just the place that I am right now in my life. It feels like that. I mean, I had fun. Obviously, I enjoyed the children. I enjoyed the hijinks. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on young adulting in the comments down below. The next book that I read was not a Harry Potter book, and that is Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by L.C. Rosin. So let me just read you the opening of this book. All four of them were just going at it. I thought there were three. No, four. That's what Tori said. All hard, and I think the guy from St. Jude's was going down on the other one. What's his name? Zach from River Prep? I thought Jessica Lauder was there with Zach. She was. No, she wasn't. I don't know, but if she was, she probably didn't leave with him after that. Who was the other one? I don't know, but Jack was like orchestrating the whole thing. He was totally seducing them all there and started the 4G. What a cold open! Jack of Hearts and Other Parts is about Jack, who is an out gay, sex positive human. He is very much into embracing his sexuality. He doesn't have boyfriends, he has a lot of hookups, and he's totally fine with that. And he has a bit of a reputation. And he starts writing a sex advice column for his friends blog. So this is not a part of the school. So when he starts receiving threatening notes in his locker at school, he does try and go to the school to be like, hey, I'm receiving these like threatening, bullying notes at school. And the school's like, well, I mean, you kind of asked for it. There are a lot of really interesting things going on. I feel like the mystery point of who is writing the notes is the weakest part of this book. I almost think it could, like, it could not be there. Um, and I would prefer if it wasn't there, actually, because what I was more interested in was the sex advice and Jack negotiating relationships with humans and just existing in a high school that has homophobia sort of baked in. Um, a lot of institutions have homophobia and, he well, they have heterosexuality baked into them and by extension are homophobic. So something that I'm noticing from Dude, You're a Queer Slur uh, by C.J. Pascoe, which is a study of masculinity in high school, is the ways in which high schools often are interested in policing young people's sexuality. They are interested in knowing what the students are doing without 
giving them any information to facilitate safe sex because they can't condone sex at the same time that they use sex to reach students. Like the coolest teachers in high school are often the ones that connect with young people with sexual jokes, with sexual stories, and I don't mean that in like inappropriate ways, but like they'll treat you like an adult. Like I had a teacher like this in high school too. She was my favorite English teacher. She's probably the reason I got as into English as I did and the reason I pursued a degree in English was because of her. But thinking about the ways she joked around with people, I would never, like she was the most loving human, went out of her way to help students succeed. She clearly wasn't specifically a homophobic person. And like, you would 100% see her stand up for students um, and shut down explicitly homophobic language. Um, but at the same time, she also definitely reinforced heterosexuality in some of the examples that she used. Oftentimes, larger abstract concepts, teachers will compare to something like marriage or a relationship between a man and a woman, and in doing that, it's like condoning heterosexuality. I have totally tangented away from uh, Jack of Hearts and other parts. Like I see these three, like my personal experience, this book and this research into masculinity in high school meshing really nicely. The school that Jack goes to has pretty explicit rules against homophobia, but the follow through with that is not great. A lot of school rituals, school dances are uh, very heterosexual. So I think it's interesting and important to see a character who presents as gay, who embraces being gay. Everybody knows he's gay. It's not a secret. Um, and he is sexual and he is empowered in his desire and his sexuality in a way that it seems like the actual experience of being in high school, I can't imagine it's changed. I think it's, it's interesting to have a more modern look with Jack of Hearts and other parts. I think it's really important to see um, a character that is fully okay with casual sex. And I liked that it stayed that way. I also think the format of this book is fantastic. I find a lot of sex in YA is heavily didactic. Characters will just be talking and then all of a sudden this one character takes on this like adult author voice where they're like, well, you know, this is what consent is, and you must establish consent with clear verbal cues. And that's maybe me exaggerating, but I feel like sometimes the educational moments are just so clunky. Whereas this, because Jack is explicitly writing a sex column, it teaches so much, but the format that it takes place in is so natural that it doesn't feel as horrible as when it just happens in conversation between young people. So the next book that I read was Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is the third book in the Harry Potter series. Um, again, I don't have too much to say about this one. It's great to see Lupin as like an actually competent professor. Of course I'm interested in the professors now at this point. I'm interested in the adults. But what I do have a little bit more to say on is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Specifically at this point on this reread, I'm starting to notice some plot points. Like obviously we, we know that everybody complains about the time turners as just like massive plot holes that have to be destroyed because they fix too many things. I think specifically with Goblet of Fire, where Goblet of Fire ends, Harry has witnessed something traumatic. Like he's 14 and how poorly that trauma is dealt with, especially because I've started reading um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and Harry is abandoned with his abusive family members and is left totally alone after experiencing this trauma. So that was something that like going from Goblet of Fire straight into Order of the Phoenix that I was like, holy shit, bad friending and parenting. I mean, maybe it's hard for two other 14 year olds, Ron and Hermione, to know how to deal with these feelings. I'm pulling out these things as criticisms because that's what I do. But like at the same time, I'm 100% enjoying it. So those are the four books that I 
read in the next part of June. Let me know your thoughts on these books in the comments down below. Have you read any of them? What do you think of them? Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you, patrons, for making videos like this and long-form projects like the Dark Tower series possible. I really appreciate the work that you are enabling me to do. If you are interested in becoming a patron and having early access to videos and voting, links to the Patreon page will be down below. You can check out the tiers there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!